Hello there, this is Ray from Kindy Data. Kindy Data is my personalized site and it's a knowledge-based platform basically for intelligence community. Uh, I'm a data scientist and I'm working for US government. So today I will show how we can run some basic SQL queries on Spark running on HD Insight uh, on Azure. Uh, so I'm assuming we all have our account uh, if not, then you have to go to Microsoft Azure and uh, we can do th 31 days of free trial period, the one I have. And once we log in and, and everything, we come here. This is the Azure dashboard. So at first, I need to click uh, uh, create storage account. So we go to new storage. I use this one. We fill up all those informations here and we create. I have already one storage account created, which is, let me come here. I have one account created here, Medicare R. So I'm going to continue, use, continue using that. Just to let you guys know, once I created the account, storage account here, I also at the same time downloaded Azure Storage Explorer. There are so many other videos. It will show you how to download, how to create an account. So once I download this one, I added an account. And the account name was, say for an example, Kindy Data 2. And I have uploaded the Medicare dot csv file here it's basically the same file i'll use this one instead of kindy data when you when you when you create an um, storage account here it will ask for the key key to connect this azure explorer and and uh, the storage account on hd insight this is the key information, the storage account name, and it will generate the key. Just key one is fine. So once everything is created, then we go back to new again. We create analytics this time. We are run analytics on Spark, HD Insight. Say for an example, I will create an account name Kindy data six. It is a free trial. Class chat type Spark preview. I'll do the standard. You guys can do others too. Credential. I'll. We have to remember this login name and user ID password. We will need this when we connect this one with the storage information. So admin and I will put the password password SSH name we have to give SSH name candidate 6 for example and I will put a password and select data source this is where we have to define the data source I will use the existing one and the existing one I have created is Medicare R location I leave it default select pricing I try to make it cheap so I do a customize Select whatever gives me lower price. I don't need that much storage for this demo. Create new resource group. You, you guys can create new as well. I will just use the existing one. I have one created. I'll pin it to the dashboard and create. Pricing information was not correct. Something was wrong there. Okay.
Now this will take almost 20 minutes to, to generate the cluster. So I will pause the video in the meantime. It is still applying changes. It is still working. We have to refresh this one time to time to make sure that yes, it has been completed. Generally it takes 15 to 20 minutes or less sometimes, depending on the speed. My internet is working slow. Uh, I hope we all know HD Inside it runs on Hadoop system. And we all know HD Inside is a Azure provider. I mean, is a uh, Microsoft provided uh, web based uh, big data system. And they are competitor of a AWS. But also speaking, personally speaking, I prefer AWS when it comes to handling data at work and big volume data. And it has many tuning options. Compared to that, Azure is easier to manipulate, but it has less flexibility. So if this for personal use or small project, Azure, I would recommend Azure. If it is big project, serious volume of data, I would recommend AWS. So once once all the cluster is generated, this this um, this notification will, will go. There will be nothing here. Then we will click cluster dashboard. It will pop up a dashboard here. Generally, it shows another notebook. There is a notebook here. The dashboard, Spark History Server. Our major uh, focus is here, the notebook. There are two notebooks here generally, Jupyter Notebook and Zeppelin Notebook. Maybe it is because it's a free account. That's why it's not giving me Zeppelin. So anyway, we will use Jupyter. We need the notebook to run Spark commands on it. So once we click the notebook, then it will bring us to this page. There's, and it, it, it's asked for the authentication. It's basically the cluster user ID and password. I'll plug the user ID and password here. Login. Uh, it's not invalid response because this task has not been finished yet. Applying all the changes or generation of the cluster is not done yet. So I will still wait. I'll pause the video. Okay, so once, once um, the cluster has been created, it is all all done, then we go to Clusters Dashboard, Jupyter Notebook, and this is on Scala, this is on Python, Python, basically this notebook offers running Spark on Python and Spark on Scala. I prefer Python, so I will upload a notebook to run the Python script. A quick note if you guys want, under this file, there are lots of reading materials and reference materials. Feel free to go through that if you would like to. Now, once I'm here, um, now I can now I need to create the create table and schema. As we know, in big data system, schema we generally develop as the read-only mode when we read it. Actually, not read-only mode when we read the data. So, uh, so to um, I have to develop a temporary table and um, develop a schema for that. To do that, first of all, let me import uh, SC, Scala context first. To save time, I have wrote the queries and the, collected the queries at the beginning. So this is going to create Spark context. A quick note, uh, when Scala is, uh, Python is uh, still running. I'm sorry, it's not Scala context, Spark context. Python is still running. When it's running, it will show us statistics here, and this is a, and this will be solid. Once running is done, it's completed. This will uh, number will be populated here, and this one will become hollow. This part takes some time, so let's wait. I'll delete this one in the meantime. I don't need this one. 
I also upload this command in um, in this personal site of mine. Uh, feel free to visit that when you have some time or if you want to see them as reference. Okay, so it's almost done. Yes, it's done now. Once um, I've imported the context, now I will load sample data into a temporary table. For the data storage, I did not use uh, the Medicare R data. I am using some default data. In the next video, I will show there are some tuning necessary over there. I'll show how to run personalized data. So this is one of the, um, these data are coming from the default storage and this data, data table is going to be called HVAC. Uh, Jupyter has built in HVAC uh, data, data, some sample data, so that people can play around. I'm using that. I'm creating temporary table. This is done running. And now I'll create schema. As you guys can see, the schema, the HVAC is the table name. This is the schema and this is a structure type. We can define the tape, uh, column here, date, time, uh, target map, and the types of is their string or their integer and so on. It will not, null, null value will be false. So we run this one here. That was quick. And then we're going to create mapping. For running, we do shift and enter. Once we copy and paste or, or write the syntax, we run uh, shift and enter. Now I will create a data framework based on the table and the schema. Table name, schema name. And this part takes a little bit time, not as long as the import function. Import function. Once running is done, I'm gonna register this one. Uh, still running. As we can see, solid statistics, regular expression. This is done. Now I run this one. Okay, this is ran too. So the table is registered and it's ready. I can do SQL queries. I can do Spark. I can do um, machine. I, I can run machine learning algorithm on this table as well. So for today, I'll do only SQL. So let's do SQL. SQL. Select all from HVAC is the table name, shift enter. It's generating. Um, it's not that big table, but it's a little bit big. I believe it has few thousand rows. And it, and it is my internet speed too. My internet speed is a little bit slow today. So it's returning values slowly. And I can run some customized SQL queries as well. Here, this is the whole table. Return the value. 2500 rows and 5 columns. It should be faster, but, we'll, but due to the internet, it's slow. Let me run 16. Shift enter. Okay, this was quick. 414. Now we can see this in table format. This query basically runs date, time, building ID, actual temperature. You can do sub-queries as well, just like regular SQL, SQL uh, server.
SQL developer uh, platform interface. So the good thing is there are other options. This is a kind of BI functionality. It brings pi diagram, scatter diagram. We can do so many. We can do even log. We can do lines, line diagram, bar diagram, area diagram, and so on. And you can run as much queries as you want. So that's basically it. Now before we hang up, I want to show you guys. Generally, Azure, it charges you based on how long you are running analytics. So the best practice is once running is done, or you're, you're done with your, your analysis and so on, just delete this one. If you delete, then it kills the cluster, cluster and you are not charged anymore. So once you're done, you delete this one, this, this cluster will be closed and on your dashboard, it will show as deleted. The cluster name and deleted. Uh, again, feel free to visit my site. I will uh, post the uh, SQL queries and uh, the informations, uh, some of the informations here, and there are many more informations here. I am still building this one. Please feel free to visit this one. Um, send me your uh, feedback so that I can come up with more informations. Thank, thanks, everyone.